Okay, Sheldon, how you doing? I'm doing okay. All right. So, you know, I'd like to start this out with something because I've been listening to some of your latest webinars, and it does seem like we're completely off track. And it reminds me of a little analogy I heard once. There's a, a guy in a four-engine airplane, and they're flying along at a comfortable altitude. And the captain comes on and says, uh, engine number one went out, so we're going to be up here about another hour. And so he's just thinking, okay, well, it's, that's all right. Then pretty soon they come back on and say, well, engine number two and three went out, so we're going to be up here maybe a couple more hours. And he's thinking, okay, well. Then he's thinking to himself, boy, if engine number four goes out, we'll be up here all night. Now, the, the analogy to this story is sometimes when we create a system, like the system we've created with finances and government, especially after, during and after World War II, it might have seemed like it might work for a while. But I think we're to the point now where we're seeing that the same logic that we used to use is no longer working, probably because of peak oil, limited resources, population explosion, would you like to comment on that? Well, this system was really meant to work with the United States as the dominant country. It did not really take into account the recovery of full recovery of Europe, and it did not take into account any of the other countries of the rest of the world, the so-called third world countries, being able to come up and reconstitute themselves back to the point where they were before the West showed up. In other words, as major powers of their region and possibly the world. And when this all started to happen about a decade ago, the United States began to see a massive destruction happening with this system. And of course, at first they held it up because this country has been on the verge of a giant collapse for the last who knows how long, maybe a decade and a half. Ever since the fall of the dot-com in the late 90s, and even before that, at the beginning of the 90s, uh, the whole financial system was threatening to come apart with uh, balloon financing. And the result of all of that right now is that this system is failing because of the massive amounts of debt, while the other parts of the world have gone along on the ride with the United States. And so there is now a sea of debt that if we tried to swim our way through it, we couldn't because there would be 100-foot waves, so to speak, as an analogy. There's just no way out of this unless we just boot this system and come up with something entirely different. And that is what a lot of economists are now seeing. But the West does not want to let go of the position that it has right now. And so if you were to look at this just from an, an outside view of this planet with the galactics not in it at all, you would be talking about, as a lot of people who are experts on Wall Street, you know, the stock market, et cetera, are just saying, we will have, before this year is out, a massive collapse of the entire system and a depression greater than the one in the 30s. Everybody understands this, even though politics is trying to keep the game going with all these basic reality statements that are totally ridiculous reality statements, like we're in the midst of a, a mild recovery. Uh, unemployment is going down. Unemployment is going down only because they manipulate the figures, and people who have been out of work for so long are not counted by the uh, labor statistics because they're now considered to be uh, permanently unemployed. So we, we see this system being manipulated and actually the entire system in this nation and around the world is falling apart. So it's not just peak oil or something like that, it's just that this system reached a point where it doesn't work anymore. And those in charge of the system are refusing to let go of it, which is why there is need for a new financial system, which when I, as you said, when I was doing the webinars, one of the things I was emphasizing a great deal is that we have to understand that an alternative financial system exists, and basically it's fighting. It's almost like, to use a sports analogy, when a new sports league starts up in any particular sport, it's immediately attempted to be destroyed by the people that are the dominant sports league in that particular sport. We're seeing that happening right now, only this time they're trying to do it by denial. This system does not exist. In other words, the new financial system. There is no alternative to the present, they will say. We have to stick it out and somehow we will get through this, which is a bunch of baloney. So 
what we need to do is understand that the system is going to collapse or is collapsing, that there is a new financial system, that there are galactics out there, and that this is a time, because of the change in consciousness that we're all going through, when there is going to be a massive degree of change. And it's going to happen suddenly because this system can only hold on for so long. And even though it's been doing the equivalent of the coyote and the and those famous cartoons of coming back again and again after things happen, in reality, it's not going to do that. It's just going to collapse, and it's going to be gone. And a new system is going to be in its place. So we have to learn to not be afraid of all of that, but to realize that this new system behind it is an immense prosperity that changes everything and also allows for disclosure, the rise of the galactics as a not just an option, but as a regular part of how this change occurs. So that's what is happening right now is we are actually in this period of change. People cannot see it because it's hidden. It's just like it's like these hidden indicators that financial experts look at that everybody else can't see to make pro uh, forecast prognostications that people can't understand. There is a there are patterns in our world right now that show in conclusively that the world we live in right now is A, changing, B, there is indeed a new financial system, and C, the people in charge of this present world are losing their grip. So that's what's happening right now. New consciousness is behind all of this because we are all looking around and saying to ourselves, the reality that we know doesn't make sense anymore. And even if things weren't to change, there would have to be a change being forced by the fact that we have around us such a massive shift in consciousness that just that alone, regardless of economic aspects, will change it all. So that's what's going on right now. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you speaking like this reminds me once we set up a, a big round tray with really fine sand laying in the tray with a speaker underneath and we would play different vibrations and when that vibration that sound vibration first started coming through it looked like it just created chaos with the sand but within a short while it it started coming through and created really perfect mandalas you know beautiful little broken down mandalas and it reminds me of what's going on right now. Right. You know, because there is a frequency, there's something happening. And if you look really close, yeah, it looks chaotic, but there's slight remnants of patterns coming through. I remember back in 1999, maybe 2000, I went to a website that tracks organizations that are doing good things on the planet. And there were 6,000 of them. Well, today there's over a million of them. So there, there is a, a rush, um, a new mentality, a new consciousness that's creeping through. But unfortunately, the, the old paradigm is really, really loud. And they have most of the media. So I, th I think we just have to learn to decipher and find that quiet space in us to where we can really disengage from the fear and look deeper. I would have to say that's absolutely right. What is, what is going on with this planet right now? It's not only this consciousness shift, but we have a reality shift. The entire environment around us is shifting, it's changing. Uh, people who are involved only in the biology of it, looking at ecosystems and how they operate, is seeing that we are on the edge of destroying the basic bi biodiversity that makes this planet work. In other words, we're putting the entire planet's living aspects, it's massive, total interconnected biodiversity, biosystems, its ecosystems, and the verge of total collapse. So we are on the verge of collapsing ecosystems for some greedy things with our economic system. People who understand the interosystems systems and economic systems understand that we need a whole new reevaluation of this process. It's not just a matter of what works, what creates profit, it's a matter of what creates life so that it can maintain itself. How do we maintain sustainability in an economy, and how do we take that economy and that shifting consciousness and create a society around it that actually works 
and allows for massive changes in how this ecosystem collapse can be corrected. We have the technology actually to correct it. But once again, it's greed versus maintenance of the old system. So this is a problem. That's why this system is doomed to collapse because there are so many who either do not understand what's happening or refuse to accept the, comp the concepts that allow for this change to occur. So we need a change at the top. You might say, uh, as I did in my last webinar, I wanted to put a wonderful little thing from Scientific American, which was a picture of the Capitol with a dome up on its side, like it was, uh, like it had a special uh, lid, and it had been closed to the side, and there was a big, huge uh, machine uh, with a brain, uh, putting a new brain into the Capitol. What we need right now is that brain change. We need to change the whole environment politically, economically and social and social politically on how this whole system operates. It just doesn't work anymore the way it did. There's new social cultural factors that are changing. And as we are saying here constantly, the big change is consciousness. As you said, late nineties, early part of this particular twenty first century, there were much less people and organizations involved in change than there are now. It's increased, as you said, from like a few thousand to exponentially up to a million or more. This is happening all around the world. There are economic systems based on so-called uh, small world, like E.F. Schumacher talked about, all over this planet. And they are being interconnected with banking systems. There's a whole alternate economic system that's already been created, the barter system, and other things related to it that now have to be interlaced together and